CGCP 2497 by Chastetica. With a pair of knights, rook, bishop and pawn, white has exactly the same amount and the same type of material as black. However, black does have a pawn on c2 which is dangerously close to promotion even though his knight on g3 is in a position to be captured. Now given that the promotion is not an immediate threat per se, perhaps the thing for white to do here is to capture this knight. Bishop captures knight, king captures bishop, and now white is ahead by a full bishop. But then black will play rook to g1 check. After king to h2, he can promote. And white is losing here. So capturing the knight is clearly not the best way to proceed. What about the even more obvious rook captures bishop? Well, black's answer to this is rook to h1. If rook captures rook, knight captures rook, the c pawn becomes unstoppable. What about e5? Black will exchange knights. Instead of recapturing and allowing bishop captures pawn, perhaps white will play rook captures bishop here. And after knight to f4, this position is probably drawish. So let's take a look at the best line in this study. So only one move actually wins for white. And that is knight to c6 check. Imagine ignoring the temptation of capturing the knight on g3 or the bishop on h2 and playing this seemingly quiet a knight to c6 check. Let's take a look at what happens. If king to e8, bishop to d7 check, king to f7, rook to f2 check, king to g8, knight to e7 check, king to h8, rook to f8 check, king to h7, rook to f7 check, king to h8, knight to g6 check, king to g8, rook to g7 mate. A forced mate in 8. So this check is not just to gain a tempo. Let's assume black sees this and avoids with king to f7. Well then still rook to f2 check. If king to g8, knight to e7 check, king to h8, rook to f8 check, king to h7, rook to f7 check, king to h6 this time, knight to g8 check, king to g6, rook to g7 mate. So black needs to avoid that too. That's why here, he throws off white's attack with knight to f5, cross check, a sacrifice. Rook captures knight, check, king to e8. In case you didn't notice what happened, white just won a knight. And here white might proceed with knight to g7, check, king to d7, rook to f1, discovered check. King captures knight, rook captures rook. And white is definitely winning here. As you can see from the engine analysis, if black doesn't play king to e8, there's a forced mate. So king to e8 is forced. And after the check on g7 by the knight, the king is forced to d7. And this allows the discovered check, which wins the rook for the other knight. So rewinding back to the original position, do you think you would have made the right move here? I think you know the answer to that one. Until the next one. Chesthetica's Book of Chess Constructs, Volumes 1 through 5. Available on Amazon.